Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to introduce you to a new concept which is called the caster diagram. So, what we have here is a Cartesian plane which looks slightly different from the Cartesian plane you're used to. Usually, you have an x and a y axis, which we still have, x and y. Now, if you do geography, you would have a 0, 90, 180, and 270, and back to 360. But since this is a Cartesian plane, we're going to be using this for trig. The way it works is that we've actually got a 0 year, 0, 90, Okay, then it goes to 180, then to 270, and back to 360. And this top quadrant here is quadrant 1, then it's quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4, and then back down to 0. So now we are going to learn how this Cartesian plane helps us in working out what is going on when we come to trig. So let's look first at our first quadrant. Let us choose a number point in our first quadrant. Let us choose this point here, where we've got this point there. So do you see that if I look at that, okay, I've got a right angle triangle, the length of the x-axis is 3, the length of the y-axis is 3, and how hypotenuse we can work out, we can say that hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 9, which is the square root of 18, which is good enough for now. That's what we're going to write, square root of 18. Right, so now what we are looking at is how our trig ratios behave in each of these four quadrants, starting with the first quadrant. So if we say that this angle here is theta, in other words, the acute angle that is made by this line with the horizontal, then we go sine of theta is equal to, and again I'm just going to write up here, sarcotoa, just as a reminder. So sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite over theta is 3, and the hypotenuse is 18, so we've got 3 over root 18. And do you see that it doesn't matter that that's a root 18, do you see that, that there is a positive number. If we look at cos theta, we've got adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case happens to also be 3 over root 18, which is again a positive number. And then we've got tan theta, and tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 3, which equals 1, which is then a positive. So do you see in our first quadrant, all three of our trig ratios are positive, and therefore we say all of them are positive in the first quadrant. Now let's look at the second quadrant. Now the second quadrant, I'm just going to randomly choose another number just to show you. In fact, I'm going to choose a number up here. Let me just get rid of that other one dot so it's not to confuse you. And just to show you, it doesn't matter where I choose this dot. So let's choose this point here, where x is minus 2 and y is 3. Okay. So therefore, this bit here is 3 long and this is minus 2. And that part news, again, we can work out. We can say that that part news is equal to the square root of y squared, in this case, which is 3 squared, plus minus 2 squared, which becomes the square root of 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13. And we're just going to leave it as square root 13. Now again, we're going to look at all three of our functions. So we're going to again write sarcotoa and sine of our theta, which is again always the acute angle that we make with the x-axis. So sine of theta is going to be the opposite, which is 3, over the hypotenuse, which is going to be 3 over root 13, which we see is a positive number. If we look at cos of theta, cos of theta is adjacent to our hypotenuse, the adjacent side is minus 2 over the hypotenuse, which in this case is root 13, 
which is going to therefore be a negative number. And then we've got tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent, which is going to then be 3 over negative 2, which is then again a negative number. So do you see in this second quadrant the only trig function that is positive is sine. So now what do we know? We know that in the first quadrant all of them are positive and in the second quadrant only the sine is positive. Let's look at the third quadrant. So again I'm just going to randomly choose a number. I'm going to choose this dot here. So we've got this really skinny tall triangle. Okay, well that's 90 degrees. Okay, where our y is minus 3 and our x is minus 1. And again, we can use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse. So we can go h is equal to the square root of minus 3 squared plus minus 1 squared which equals the square root of minus 3 squared is just 9 plus 1, which is the square root of 10, which we're going to leave like that. That's fine. All we're trying to find out is whether what the different functions are. We've learned so far that all the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. Only the sine is positive in the second quadrant. And now we're looking at the third quadrant. So again, just to help us, we're going to use SARCOA and we're going to, okay, sine theta, which is again the acute angle with the horizontal, is equal to the opposite side, which is minus 3 over root 10, the hypotenuse, which is a negative number. Cos theta is adjacent, which is minus 1 over the hypotenuse root 10, which is again negative, and tan theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so in this case it's going to be minus 3 over minus 1, which works out to be 3, which is therefore a positive number. So therefore the only trig function that is positive in this third quadrant is tan, or the tangent. Let's look at the fourth quadrant. Can you guess what it's going to be? If we look at the previous one, there was all, okay, there's all over here, sine over here, tan over here, so what's left? Okay, let's see if you're right. So, let's look at the fourth quadrant, and I'm going to randomly choose another point. I'm choosing this point here, and we're making a little triangle here. There we go. So we've got a nice little right angle triangle, okay. And we've got that this length here is 3, and that length down there is minus 2, and this is our part news. And again, we're going to use Pythagoras. So we're going to go that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 4 which is then again the square root of 13. So this is the square root of 13. So now again we're going to be using our SACOA. Okay, so let's do sine theta. Sine theta, which again is this teeny little angle that is made with the horizontal, is opposite over our partners. The opposite side is minus 2 over that partners, which is root 13. So therefore that is a negative. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 3 over root 13, which is positive. So now let's look at tan. So tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is going to be minus 2 over 3, which is then obviously negative. So therefore we've worked out now that in the first quadrant everything is positive, so that's all. In the second quadrant only the sine ratio is positive. In the third quadrant we've got tan and the fourth we've got cos. So to let's summarize. Quadrant one is all. Quadrant two is sine. 
quadrant 3 is tan and quadrant 4 is cos. And that's where we get the cos diagram name, C-A-S-T. You may have also heard of all stations to Cape Town. There are lots of different ways to do it. Okay, and this is a very useful tool, so please make sure you know it very, very well. This, together with your Sokotoa and your special triangles, are the three things that you are going to be drawing on your paper the minute you walk in and do a trig test or exam. Right, grade tens, please make sure that you know how to do this and then go do the questions at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.